Iran is a mountainous, arid, and ethnically varied country in Southwest Asia. Iran is considered a cradle of human civilization and boasts one of the oldest and noblest histories in the world. Over time, it assumed a very important role as an imperial power and a center of education, culture, and trade. The country has more than 20 UNESCO heritage sites, such as the archaeological sites of Persepolis and Pazargadae. Iran has one of the richest artistic heritages in the history of the world, spanning different disciplines, such as architecture, painting, weaving, ceramics, calligraphy, metalwork, and stonework. The direct legacy of ancient Iranians is found throughout the Middle East, the Caucasus, the Arabian Peninsula, Egypt, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan, India, and Pakistan. Formerly known as Persia, present-day Iran has been influenced by waves of diverse conquerors and civilizations. Historians say Persian civilization first emerged in 550 BCA, more than a thousand years before the spreading of Islam and two centuries before the exploits of Alexander the Great. Under the rule of Persia's first dynasty, namely the Achaemenid dynasty and its king Cyrus the Great, who laid the foundations of law over a wide range of citizens and cultures, the Persian Empire was the largest empire ever created, that stretched from Turkey to Egypt to Central Asia and Northern India. At its peak, the Persian Empire occupied 5,500,000 square kilometers, and at the height of its reach, controlled 34% of the world's population. With today's population estimate, it would be like ruling China, India, the United States, and Indonesia, the four largest countries in the world. After the fall of the Achaemenids, the Sassanian dynasty took the power in 224. The fought avidly against the Eastern Roman Empire and Byzantine incursions. Zoroastrianism was practiced as the state religion until the arrival of Islam in 636. From this historical period, Persia established itself as a cultural center of the ancient world, thriving trade routes and becoming the center for all arts, such as painting, sculpture, textiles, carpet creation became a key feature of the Persian lifestyle. After the fall of the Sassanian Empire, Persians began to be part of the Muslim world. The control of the Rashidun's, the first of the Islamic Caliphate that began the spreading of Islam, led Zoroastrianism to its decline. Despite this, the largely established Persian culture gave important contribution to the established Arab rule. For example, the Persian language enjoyed an incredible revival and the arts of poetry found a new audience to address. The Persians made important advances in the disciplines of medical science, influencing medieval Europe with its knowledge and discoveries. During history, empires and nations imposed their culture on other lands through invasion. But those who invaded Persia, such as the Greeks or Mongols, were influenced by it. A scholar of the Royal Asiatic Society, the UAK's oldest academic society of Asian affairs, wrote in 1830, The history of the Persian poet is the history of the Persian nation. It is the biography of the greatest man, whose lives, actions, feelings, and tastes are all, to a greater or less extent, associated with poetry and influenced by the poetic impulse. 
Lives have been sacrificed or spared. Cities have been annihilated or redeemed. Empires have been subverted or restored by the influence of poetry. The city of Isfahan has a long history from the pre-Islamic period and is considered Iran's national treasure. Isfahan was chosen as the capital during the Safavid dynasty in the late 17th century. The city has always been central to the city's growth as important center of the Silk Road. 400 years ago, Isfahan was larger than London and more cosmopolitan than Paris. Early travelers came to Isfahan's huge square to discuss arts and literature. The city was known to be religiously tolerant and hospitable. Isfahan was a triumph of mercantile and diplomatic activities. Many merchants from Europe, Turkey, India and China gathered at a person's court. Isfahan was characterized by elegant and picturesque bridges which crossed the modern river. Beautiful streets and palaces were built with modern engineering techniques. Hundreds of domes and minarets rose up. Isfahan, also called the Florence of the East, had beautiful Persian gardens with trees, flowers and fountains. During the reign of Shah Abbas I, the fifth Safavid Shah of Iran, the city was renovated with the construction of many harmonious monuments and buildings, for which Isfahan is remembered today. City's richness was used to build bridges, roads, caravanserais, libraries, hospitals and public baths. The costume of bathing and cleansing had a great significance among the people of ancient Iran. Body and faces cleaning was considered a vital matter that allowed to maintain a healthy and pure appearance. Isfahan was the epitome of Islamic person architecture and urban planning. All of these amazed Western visitors who had never seen anything like this before. The golden age of Isfahan cannot be separated from the name of Shah Abbas I, one of the Persians greatest rulers. Abbas was raised in Herat. Since childhood, the future ruler was a passionate connoisseur of the arts and under his power the country literally prospered, becoming a promoter of the Persian culture and art, whose influence is still alive today. He was known as the empire's strongest leader and a brilliant strategist. He created a strong standing army with more than 40,000 fighters and fought against Ottoman and Uzbek troops who had invaded Iran's territories. He eliminated his enemies and in 5087 Abbas was crowned king, reaching his power's age in his late twenties. He was famous for being an energetic person, loved hunting and was also a skilled craftsman, making scimitars and saddles for his horses, weaving clothes and stealing flower water with his own hands. Although almost illiterate, he was a skillful conversationalist with a thirst for knowledge. Abbas discussed religions tolerantly, roamed among his people and was interested to know about the land conditions from which Isfahan's visitors came. Italian Orientalist Pietro della Valle, who traveled through Asia during the Renaissance period, was amazed by the Shah's knowledge about Christian history and theology and by how he was able to establish diplomatic ties with European powers and the Church of Rome too. De La Valle's secret hope was to create an alliance between Christendom and the Muslim rural in an anti-Ottoman function. In his work wrote about the Shah's qualities and dismantled the criticism leveled at him by Western detractors, but he found several difficulties from the Vatican in publishing it. De La Valle described the Shah had 
indefatigable hunter, scrupulous courtier, experienced soldier, excellent captain, the most whimsical knight, a prince above a fable manner and king of great government. King Abbas is a truly prince endowed with many good qualities, and the malevolent ones who notice bad qualities on him are either not true at all, or if they are true, they are largely worthy of excuse. No one cannot fail to say that he is a great king and a great hero. Those who have seen him cannot help but admire him. So the fame that celebrates him even today will not fail to celebrate him even after he is dead and raise him among the most worthy heroes in the future centuries. Abbas never embarking on any project without following the astrologer's advice. In 1598, he moved the Safavid capital from Kadzvin to Isfahan, where he designed a new complete city worthy of his power, quickly becoming one of the most beautiful cities in the world, whose change in status increased its population. No has the royal square or the Shah square. Its origin dates back to when Isfahan became the capital of the behest of Abbas. From this choice, the royal square was the first area built to accommodate the great splendor of the entire city. The square was the symbolic center of the Safavid dynasty and the Persian Empire. Since that time, this square played an important role in Isfahan's economic prosperity. Indeed, it was an important stop along the Silk Road and cosmopolitan commercial center. Today, we could imagine the buzz of the place crowded with merchants, shopkeepers and artisans, and we could smell the spices in the large bazaar still present on the square's sides. This square is one of the largest in the world. The background square is framed by turquoise domed mosques, a palace perched on columns and historical monuments. The traveler Pietro della Valle observed Isfahan Square and was so enchanted by it. According to him, Isfahan Square beauty eclipsed Piazza Navona's beauty in Rome, his own city. He wrote about One of these is the Median or Piazza Maggiore in front of the Royal Palace. All around has the same order of architecture, equal, fair and never interrupted either by streets or otherwise. It is made of great arcades and there's a lot of stores floors, with different waves arranged with order from place to place. There are balconies and windows above it with a thousand vague ornaments. Their architecture's union appears so big and good for the eye, although Piazza Navona's houses are taller and richer factories to our costume, never tell us, because of the discordance and other particulars, which I shall to say that the maiden of Isfahan are there to place it before Piazza Navona itself. The Afghan invasion of 1722 put an end to the city's magnificence, but an enterprising and accurate restoration effort has restored Isfahan's splendor. The Shah Mosque building was completed by the Seljak dynasty. Around 1630 was the main largest Isfahan's attraction. The Shah Mosque is decorated with colorful tiles that create a unique and beautiful seven-color mosaic patterns characterized by calligraphic inscriptions. 
Inside the mosque, visitors can admire a stone out of place, a stone that marks an important acoustic point that allows sound to boom back and forth between floor and ceiling. Without the vast dome, the sound would be reflected. The iconic blue tiled mosaic helps to provide strong reflections, that's why so many repeats of echo are heard. The mosque has four iwans and towering doors, two 42 meter high minarets, and beautifully carved wooden balconies with mukarnas running along the sides. A small pool and resting place for horses were in the middle. At the entrance, the worshippers found a large marble basin set on a pedestal, filled with fresh wood. This pool is still there after 400 years, but now unused. Isfahan Mosque was built with 18 million bricks and over 400,000 tiles. Sheikh Lutfala Mosque is one of the architectural masterpieces of Isfahan. Was set in the eastern wing of the square. This was the first monument to be erected in the city of Abbas. Sheikh Lutfala resided inside of the mosque. He was an Arabic speaking Shiite, Imam, and teacher of Islamic law, and was part of the imperial family. The mosque was built for the king and his royal family's use. That's why the mosque has no minarets, as the Muezzin's voice was not meant to call the entire community to prayer. The mosque was built with an amazing and meticulously mathematical use of design. As for Shah Mosque, if we stand in the center of the domed chamber, the sound propagates incredibly by tenfold. An unprecedented use of color dominates the entrance door, the domes and the interiors of the mosque. The use of polychromatic tiles as ornamentation was known in certain periods of Iranian history, but it was the Safavids who established color as an essential component of this architecture, emphasizing the aesthetic components of the buildings. The Chehel Sotun Palace surely reminds us of the ancient tales set in the wonderful Persian palaces that at least once we have heard of. The palace was built in Achaemenid style and was originally thought of as a reception hall. The palace has a columned veranda and a swimming pool in its front. When the 20 veranda columns are reflected in the front wall, the number of columns becomes 30. In the eastern part, the ancient Persian garden declared as UNESCO heritage site has a rectangular shape surrounded by rows of trees that proceed to a majestic pavilion. The palace has 10 rooms, and the main hall is known as the Hall of Mirrors. Various styles were used in palace design, such as paintings, frescoes, fretwork, and inlaid designs. Each of these tell us a story. The illustrations depict scenes of royal festival and glorious moments, such as royal celebration or war scenes. The Kaju Bridge is one of the most beautiful bridges in Isfahan and whole Hiran. Its construction dating back to the 17th century on older bridges remains. Several bridges were built which still crosses the Zayanderud River, the historically city's lifeblood. Kaju's names come from the bridge's proximity to the neighborhood where the Kajas or Cortes lived there. The bridge has two levels, the first served as a pedestrian area and the second was where horsemen, carts and caravans crossed the river. 
An engineering future still visible today are the sluices installed under the lower arches that had the ability to control the influx and outpouring of water through it, allowing nearby gardens to be irrigated. At nightfall, the bridge is illuminated by fascinating light and people gather to sing. Ali Kap is one of the finest architectural examples of the Safavid dynasty and is located on the western side of the square. Ali Kap consists of six floors and was the official residence of the Persian emperors. His were kings and courtiers held day meetings with foreign ambassadors. Inside there were banquets, a music room and a royal harem. The king from his reserved balcony admired ceremonies and games, such as the game of polo or the game of wild wolfies. The palace's entrance is decorated with various person arts, painting and calligraphy. The porch has 80 columns and a copper pool unique in its time, which was filled with hot or cold water by a special pump. The special pump transferred water to the entire palace's floors. According to foreign visitors' old travel diaries, the palace had a basement inhabited by a group of cannibalistic individuals called Kejini, whom suffered from gut because of this tendency. Kejini took orders from the king to kill the condemned people by eating them alive. Today, the present palace is the result of the addition and Safavid king's changes over the time. Have you ever been to Isfahan? Did you know its history? Let me know with a comment. Then if you liked my video, please subscribe and leave a like. Thanks for watching!